Alright, so I know I said in the last video of this project that we have a couple things that we need to finish on this project, and they're, I know they're not the most interesting things ever. Uh, that's why I went ahead and did them anyway off camera. We finished the engine mounts for the engine. That thing's finally solid in there. The transfer case mounts are finished in here. I added more tubing here and there to strengthen the frame, mainly strengthen this portion right here, which was flexing all over the place as well as add a bit more tubing here and just some things here and there that I was able to finalize that uh, I didn't, I, you know, it's not, it's not the most interesting stuff ever so that's why I just went ahead and did it off camera. So now, now we can start working on the semi more interesting stuff. I know it's still not as interesting as seeing this thing running but it's, you know, it's what we have to do. Anyway, so what we need to do is we need to uh, somehow put a cover over the CVT, I'm, I'm only going to do the top just because I'm planning on like putting side paneling on this whole thing, it's skid plates, uh, just so you know it looks more like a rock crawler, rock, no, I'm not calling it a rock bounce, rock crawler, I keep calling it a rock crawler. Uh, so therefore I'm not worried about putting like any covers on the bottom of it because the, you know, the frame's going to be covered, so all we need to do is put a cover over the top. So therefore my leg doesn't get sucked in the CVT and I can put my you know, foot right here. And then once we do that, then we can start working on uh, brake pedal, throttle, as well as gear shifter. Alright, so we got the uh, cover for the CVT installed. I definitely wanted to make sure this thing's wide enough, so therefore wherever I put my leg, I'm not in any danger of getting my pant leg getting sucked in the CVT and anything like that. Now, I, I wanted to make sure that the, I can easily remove this without needing any spe special tools or any wrenches or anything like that in case we ever have to change the belt on the trail. So I made it to where we can remove this by simply removing a half inch pin back here, then all you gotta do, lift up on it, wiggle it around a little bit, and it pulls out just like that. You can see I had to add this portion right here to protect my foot from the chain. This is where it attaches to on the front, it's basically these right here are like that, and then the receiving end is welded on the frame. 
right there. So I wanted to, I made sure that this is strong enough. This is eighth of an inch thick plate steel because you guys keep saying that these belts have a potential of blowing up if they get worn or warm or worn or whatever it is. And I wanted to make sure that worst case scenario, if this does, if this belt ever does blow up, uh, I doubt it's gonna go through eighth of an inch thick plate steel. So to put this thing back on, all I gotta do is just put it back into place, hit it just like that, put the pin back in, just like that, and now it is back installed. So my because of the way that this is set up, my foot has to go here, the brake pedal is gonna have to go here, it's a little cramped in here, but that's just the way it is with this vehicle. And unfortunately, the top of my foot hits this piece of tubing right here that we added in one of the previous videos of this project. So unfortunately that's not gonna work. We gotta do something about that. So we're actually having a couple issues with this setup right here. Not only the issue of my feet kind of hit right here and I need to make room for my feet being here and for the pedals and all this kind of stuff, but one thing, I, I honestly, I completely failed to think of this when installing the radiator in this location right here. I failed to think, I have to see in this direction. I have to see what's in front of me. And when I sat in this seat in this thing for the first time after installing the radiator, I kind of noticed like, oh, I can't really see that much in front of me because the radiator kind of sticks up pretty far and it's blocking a lot of my view of what's in front of me. Completely failed to think of that, so I kind of feel like an idiot about that. So we have to fix that because I don't want to, I, I need to be able to see what's in front of me. That does help when driving a vehicle like this. The other issue that we're having is I don't really like how the frame is right here. Ever since I put it like this, I haven't liked it from the start. I think it's the curve, it's the angle in which it sits. I just, I don't really like it. Because with projects like these, I really strive to not only have them perform really well once I'm done perfecting stuff and changing stuff to whatever I want, whatever this thing needs, I also really strive to have stuff like this look really cool and look at the best that I can do. And with this, I like most of the frame. It's just I don't like this front section right here. And I have an idea on how we can possibly fix all three issues. The issues of the radiator being too high, the issue of this kind of just looks really ugly, and the issue of my feet hitting this right here. And that fix simply is by cutting all this off and redoing it. Basically starting from scratch from this, leaving all this, but cutting all this off and doing it again. So this is a lot better position for the radiator. It's not only lower, I can see a lot better over this thing, but it means that the radiator fan is not gonna be blowing hot air directly onto the engine. It's gonna kind of be blowing it up and over the engine. Unfortunately, it does mean that it's kind of blowing, gonna be blowing it directly into my face, but hopefully it's enough distance away to the, where the hot air will disperse and I won't feel a bunch of hot air being, you know, blown directly in my face. But it's better for the engine, but not necessarily better for myself. But that'll be, that'll hopefully be uh, fine. Now, it there is one downside to this. Uh, I'm gonna have some air pocket issues with the with the radiator hose. I have to have a hose go from here to here. 
There's gonna be an air pocket in there. I have to figure out how to deal with that. Then I also have to move the radiator cap from the top of the radiator to the very top of the hose right here on the radiator hose. So therefore the radiator cap is at the highest point in the coolant system. Yeah, I am really happy with how it turned out. I'll be honest, there was a couple hours, like maybe four hours of me just staring at this before cutting all that stuff off, of me just pondering, like, should I do this? 
I was I was afraid that I was gonna mess it up or make it worse looking. I was like, I just leave it. You know, it's good enough. We got a ton of work we got to do on this thing. Do I really want to start cutting stuff off that's not really necessary? But I'm really glad I did it because man, I think it just turned out a whole lot better looking than it did before because that was driving me nuts at first. You know, the original look I just never liked it. And this, I think, looks a whole lot better. So we do have to make the center section, whatever you call it, that's gonna kinda go over here, it's gonna connect here, it's kinda go over here, kinda overhang here. That is gonna help us connect these two uh, hoops together. Because right now there's really nothing structural holding them this way. And I feel like if, uh, especially because these things are only tacked together with two little tiny tacks, uh, if we put air back in these shocks, these things are just going to bend out of the way. So we need to make that center section to tie these two together. And also it needs to be removable, so therefore we can still get the engine and radiator out of the frame.
Alright, I am really liking how this is turning out. I just kind of I kind of see this as a weak point a little bit because when there's weights on these shocks, the weight of this is going to be trying to push this in this direction, which is why I had to connect these two together. But I'm looking at this and the, I kind of see this as a weak point. The way that this is bent down like this, this should ideally be straight across, but I, it didn't turn out to be like that. So I can kind of see like if there's any like really hard impact on the shocks, I can kind of see this being forced in this direction and possibly these two welds right here being bent and forcing this piece down and then this is kind of uh, you know collapsing like that. So we need to somehow support this from the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some cross bracing on here going from here to here and from here to here. And that's going to help support it from the bottom and to help make this a lot, lot stronger. Now the reason there's kind of a lot of space in between here and the reason that this part, this part of whatever we want to call this is so high, because I'll admit, I like how this turned out, I just don't really like how much it sticks out and is, because this kind of makes this whole front section just really big looking, but the reason for that is we still have to do something for an air filter for the throttle bodies, and obviously we can't use the original air box. This is the original air box for this engine and it just is way too tall. If we did use it, this is how far it would stick out. So, can't use it, we gotta think of, we gotta do something else. And basically my idea is, I'm gonna build an aluminum box that houses an air filter that's gonna go right in this giant empty space right here and then I'm gonna use two inch aluminum tubes that go from the air box and then go up 180 degrees and it goes into the throttle bodies like that and I wanted to make sure that there's enough room in here for that 180 degree bend for those aluminum tubes so that's kind of why this is you know has a lot of space in here and this kind of sticks out pretty far so but yeah I, I still think it looks it looks a whole lot better than it did before. I never liked the original look of the front of this vehicle. I thought it always looked like a bad version of like a dragon's head with two giant nostrils in the front. I, I never liked it. So I'm glad we changed it. The radiator is in a much better position. And I know that there's a lot of tubing up here, but it's uh, I can it's not that clustered of tubing. When you look at it from here, I can still see through it. And I can see a lot better of the front of this vehicle whereas I couldn't really see it that much in the original design because the radiator was right there. So even there, even though there is a lot of tubing up here, I can still see through it and see a lot better in the front of this vehicle. So now the original plan for this video was gonna be, I wanted to do the, uh, the cover for the CVT, which we did, but I also wanted to do the brake pedal, gas pedal, gear shifter, clutch lever, all that kind of stuff. Then once we do all of that, then, we, uh, then I wanted to fully disassemble the frame, weld it all together, reassemble it, 
and all that, but I chose to do this instead, and I'm really glad we did that. So that's all that stuff's gonna have to be in the next video of this project, as well as we still need to finalize the drive system. We need to lengthen all the, uh, both uh, drive shafts as well as all four CV axles. We need to, uh, I cut them apart. We need to uh, turn a slug, that's whatever diameter in between the part that we cut, and I need to do a 100% weld on, uh, on all of them on all four CV axles. So that is going to be a whole lot of welding for that. And then once we do all that, then we can start working on trying to get this engine running. So that's going to have to be the next couple of videos of this project. But for now, i got to end this video here. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Oh, my lord. That is a big spider. Oh, God. I did not make it. I did not get it. I missed by like a mile. Where did it go? Well, it's gone. <laughs> oh, great. Now it's going to drive me nuts that the spider that big is somewhere in here. I hate spiders. I absolutely hate spiders. Why did I have to miss?